welcome back to another video on the channel today i'm going to be looking at day three of the battle of the brits men's singles event uh kicking things off with andy murray against james ward um andy was tested a lot more than i thought he'd be in this match i thought james Ward played very well uh, when you consider the difference in quality between the two on a singles court yeah i thought ward served well um and he competed in a lot of the games i think the writing was always on the wall um, I don't think Murray was at his, you know, hundred percent best throughout the match. Uh, perhaps saving himself for the semi-final and final. Uh, there's a lot of tight games and both sets were close, but I just thought Murray produced that extra bit of quality that he needed um, in the big stages, and he won the big points. Uh, we know Murray's obviously a more superior player to James Ward, and Murray Murray stepped it up when he needed to at the business end of the sets um, to close out a six-three seven-five win. Um, Murray talked after the match saying that he thought he relied on his slice backhand too much. Um, he would like to have a bit more power and aggression with that uh, stroke. Um, but overall, I thought he moved very well. I think the more he plays, the, the better he's moving, really. And I think, you know, just the more tennis Murray can play, the better that will be. Um, and the more match practice, um, you know, the better it is for Murray in the future. So overall, I think it's been a very good week for Andy. Um, obviously, it is only exhibition, so doesn't really matter if he doesn't win the title but you know it'd be nice for Andy to get that winning feeling back uh, but most importantly he's feeling fit and healthy and uh, moving on court again which is which is fantastic and um, exactly what everybody wants to see and hopefully he can continue this um, post lockdown and get back to competing at the business end of um, tournaments towards the end of the year. Uh, moving on to Dan Evans against Cam Norrie and I thought Dan Evans was fantastic again um, I made him favourite to win this tournament at the start of the week and I'm continuing that prediction um, he just makes everything so easy uh, he takes the ball on very early he got early breaks against Cam Norrie in both sets which sort of um, set the sets up because Dan Evans has got a very good serve and he was taking taking the ball on early looking for winners and he's backhand and forehand doing full floor uh, his attack minded tennis was, was just too much for Cam Norrie really um, very very difficult to to stop a Dan Evans in that form really who's who's coming into the um into the net and attacking with his backhand and forehands down the line he's, he's very difficult to get out of that rhythm and at the minute you've got to say Dan Evans is in the form of his life over the past 18 months he's you know been challenging top 20 top 16 players in the world um so yeah, he was just a level above Cam Norrie. I thought Norrie, Norrie battled well, you know, he served pretty well and he, he'd done his best to impose himself on the match, but Dan Evans was, just had too much qualities and too good a form um, to lose to a player like Cam Norrie. Um, and moving on to what was match of the day for me, um, I talked at the start of the week about the importance of the young players getting showcased and getting TV time and you know, a chance to attract new fans and supporters to British tennis. Um, and I think Paul Job and Ryan Penniston done an outstanding job of advocating British tennis yesterday when, you know, they've both turned up, having not played tennis for a long, long time. Um, they're only in the tournament because of the injuries to Jay Clark and Jack Draper. And they put on a show yesterday and you could see they're really, you know, playing to win and playing for the futures, playing to attract people to the sport and attract um, hopefully fans to the to themselves and I thought they've done, both done fantastically well, but Paul Job did come out on top um, in a matchy side and tie break, and I was thoroughly impressed with Paul Job. He's he's not a player I've seen a lot of. Um, he is so, so only twenty year old, and he he won the NCAA championships in U.S. college tennis. He's recently been awarded the LAT, LTA scholarship uh, program, so he's got everything there to to kick on but most importantly he's a, he's a fantastic tennis player I mean anybody watched him yesterday his forehand was incredible um, hitting it from all angles and just seems to be able to hit winners all over the court uh, he's very quick around the court and just all around fantastic tennis player very entertaining to watch and, and Ryan Penniston as well played, played um, a fantastic part in the match as well you know Penniston's again a player that came in late um, took a set off Cam Norrie the other day and forced him to a match aside and tie break um, and again, Penniston yesterday, I thought he looked very good as well. Um, you know, a, a similar, a similar style, and in the, in the fact he's very entertaining to watch as well. And I think we've got two players there that people will want to follow. You know, I've been reading on Twitter a lot about the two players, and people have thoroughly enjoyed yesterday's match. And 
Um, even just some looking at the Twitter profiles, I know they've gained uh, a lot of followers this week, which is exactly what we want. Um, just the more exposure these sort of players can get. Um, we just need players follow people following their careers and attending UK events and supporting as many British players as possible. But so far, I think this week's been outstanding for that. Um, yeah, I think Peniston and Job have both um, produced some fantastic tennis and to themselves proud. But yesterday's match was uh, yeah, a fantastic battle and the one Paul Job done very well to come out of victorious. So moving on to today, uh, first up is Kyle Edmund against Liam Brody. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kyle's already in the semi-finals having won his first two group matches. Um, you know, Liam Brody's um, played well this week. Uh, obviously very difficult for him up against the likes of uh, Murray and Edmund when the ranked top 16 players and Andy's, you know, one of the best in the world on his day, but yeah, Kyle's looked fantastic fantastic this week. I mentioned the other day how hard he's worked uh, off court during lockdown, you know, he's put on four kilogram of muscle and he just seems to be blasting the ball uh, from all angles into into winners and he got that massive win over Andy Murray, which I'm sure done his confidence the world are good. Um and you would expect uh, Kyle Edmund to come out on top in this one, you know, he's he's a lot higher ranked than Liam Brody and he's played very well so far this year, Kyle Edmund. Uh, in the tennis that we've had so yeah I would expect Kyle Edmund to serve well um, keep that aggressive style and just out hit um, Liam Brody really from the back of the court and uh, that would put Kyle at the top of his group uh, winning 3 out of 3 uh, moving on to Dan Evans against Ryan Penniston this could potentially be a fantastic matchup um, you know Penniston's quick around the court he's got a, diff- a few different styles uh, switches up in pace and I know Evans probably won't have played uh, Penniston before so hopefully Penniston can cause Dan a few problems um, but you know if Evans starts the match well and starts hitting his backhand and forehand as we know he can then he, he is very very difficult to stop for, for anybody in the world let alone um, a guy ranked 3 or 400 in the world but I just hope Penniston turns up and produces his best game and manages to hopefully to win a set um, and does himself uh, proud as he has done so far this week but I'm sure you'll relish your opportunity to, to come up against a pair like Dan Evans you know you, you, you can only learn from from watching and competing against a pair like Evans and it's not a, it's not an opportunity that a lot of these low ranked guys get so I'm sure he'll take full advantage of yeah this opportunity and uh, learn a lot from his match today against Dan but you have to predict Dan to uh, come out and top in that one and lastly uh, Paul Jubb against Cam Norrie and I think if Paul Jubb was to beat Norrie um, he would qualify which to think he only turned up yesterday and, um, he could win 2 out of 2 and qualify for the semis but um, yeah this would be a great match you know Cam Norrie's had that benefit of playing on the courts uh, this week for a little bit longer you know he's played a couple of more matches more than um, Paul Jubb uh, Jubb has turned up late and he hasn't played tennis for a long long while so you wonder how you know, come out yesterday's match it was a pretty long one in the end, uh, winning that match to decide and tie break. But honestly, um, yeah, the way Paul Jump played yesterday, I think you know he looks like he's really out there to win, um, and doing himself proud and really put put himself on the map of British tennis. And for that reason, I'm going to pick Paul to win. Uh, I just think he was he was outstanding yesterday's forehand, and I think he'll go to match aside and tie break. It will be very close. You know, comes. Cam's got a very good um, serve and he's been in good form himself in 2019 which is the Auckland Open final uh, but yeah I just think Paul Job looked like he was on a roll yesterday and he's a, he's a man on a mission and there's no reason why he can't upset Cam now today so I'm going to be picking Paul Job to win this one but yeah um, I sort of get into the business end now of the group stages the final stage of group, group stages today and then tomorrow's the semis and Sunday the final I believe um, of the singles and the doubles but yeah I just want to say so far this week I think it's been a fantastic event you know it looks as safe as tennis possibly can be um, and you know the 100,000 at least getting raised for NHS charities is obviously fantastic um, but I think you know one of the most important things to come out of this is that we're getting to see the likes of Penniston and Job and Unfortunately, we didn't get to see much of Jay Clark or Jack Draper this week, but you know their time will come. Um, but to get the likes of Penniston and Jubb on court, um, attracting that sort of new audience and new people to their to their profiles and get following their careers is fantastic. And 
I mentioned this before, but the Progress Tour is running a British Women's Tournament in a couple of weeks, uh, which I'll be doing a preview of, so check that out because we've got lots of young, uh, talented British players, women's British players coming through as well, so uh, it'll definitely be worth checking that tournament out as well. But thanks for watching again, and I will see you tomorrow.